remember being at the end of a relationship in dire times and just wanting to get the hell out of there. I had a friend of mine who lived up here. He was doing well, he was playing, he was busy, there's clubs and the likes of me could do, do well. So uh, somebody gave me a pickup truck. I drove up, I had $200 in my pocket when I left, some food, my instruments and clothes. I ended up getting married and looking for something to do with our, our lives and our time, so we ended up driving around uh, Canada for a while and then uh, got to Vancouver and eventually made our way up here to the Yukon and both got a job working at a bush camp. I got a phone call at the place where I was staying. Someone had tracked me down, James Robinson, a friend of mine. He was up in Whitehorse. He says, you got to get your ass up here. It's great. And James and I were musician friends, and so I thought, well, I have a month off. So I'll just go to the Yukon. We actually had intended to come here on advice from a family friend that offered us a job. We drove around and just kind of took our time getting here, visiting people that we knew along the way, and then eventually made our way up here. And when we got to Vancouver, we didn't really realize how much further it was to drive to the Yukon, and we'd figured that if it's you know three days to drive across Canada, it can only must only be you know eight or nine hours from Vancouver to to Whitehorse. We were literally, we were pretty naive and had no idea until we started driving and I remember pulling over every 50 kilometers and calling family back home and saying, whoa, look at this, there's mountains everywhere, we just ran past it, you know, caribou, just, you know, all kinds of weird stuff happened. I just think I loved freedom and just the whole crazy, vast, last frontier. No one comes here, you can pull over on the side of the road and you know wherever you're walking that maybe no one's ever walked there before. And just that whole thought of no one has ever been down this, you know, little animal trail, you know, no human being, no human being has been here or there, and that kind of was just in, really in, uh, enticing. Gee, gee. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how to get here, because then I don't want to see you. Well, we're basically about 23 miles outside of Whitehorse sitting in the middle of a 260-acre elk farm. As you can see, parts of elk are running around the yard and my dog's mouths. That's normal. When I saw this place, I went small, but I looked down the Ibex Valley where the sun's going down now. And uh, sitting on that deck, you know, in the summertime having a barbecue, there's not a better view. I started hitchhiking when I was 12, 13, took a freight train, liked it, and just kept moving. I don't get lonely. I, I discovered that, I guess, in my teens, just moving around. I can be alone, but I don't get lonely. The thing I like about the Yukon is I can come out here and sit. I can sit at my house, and no one thinks it's weird that I don't go into town for two weeks. A whole bunch of us have chosen to move up here and so that means that you have to accept the extremes. Being in a place that, you know, gets 40 or 45 or 50 or 60 below, there's not much room for error and you could die uh, if your car breaks down a half a mile out of town. If you're not prepared, you could die. There's that harsh reality sort of that's the land has just about it.
On a rusty mine train Moaning down your line On a rusty mine train Moaning down your line I hopped aboard Just to see you now I hope to make it back On time On a steaming metal snake, big boiler, one hand break. On a steaming metal snake, big boiler, one hand break. She said, 29 loads of freight, better not make the slate boil again. Twenty-nine loads of freight Better not make this late boy late again That whistle blew Thoughts of you smoke through When that whistle blew Thoughts of you smoke through Just a jealous man Passing time Chugging along that dirt track line Welcome to Ted's little cabin in the woods. Let's go in and have some fun. White arms, neon shine bright. Pretty lads, red. I'll shut down all the honky tonks tonight. Say a prayer. band from down south will come up here and play. There's always one player in the band who just falls in love with this place. It's the person who's looking for something different. Just that little something different, it's hard to really put into a definitive term. When you live in a cabin or outside the normal type city life, which there's a lot of out here, if you don't have television, you don't have electricity, all those little creature comforts, you learn to read, you learn to talk to people, or you pick up an instrument. How's the loft coming, or is it gone? Gosh, How is it? It works spray. in progress. Yes. The addition is sort of shop. Yeah, why would you want to finish your house Never within 25 really years? Same yeah. point of that. Last then you'd have to move, it's finished. Everyone I know who gets their shit together dies. <laughs> no. Started with Al. Yeah. Al started getting his <laughs> shit together and he killed himself skydiving. Some people come up here and they just go, yuck. They just don't like it because don't have the shopping malls, don't have the transit system that they're so used to, these little things. Maybe they need a subway station coffee shop with the noise and the hustle and the bustle. Maybe they need that. I sit here, I got the wood stove. You know, I have electricity, indoor plumbing, as compared to Ted's, my creature comfort. Yeah, and I sit there and barbecue up an elk and look out the Ibex Valley and I go, wow, well, I wonder what the poor people are doing. Possibly there's a, re we, we get put here for a reason and, and then definitely there's some sense of that, you know, here to learn and uh, hopefully evolve a little bit. Yeah, here to experience and learn. Well, I grew up in a Mennonite community, which is a real fundamental religious sect kind of thing, and was very isolationist. 
I mean, one had a sense that there was an outside world, but the view was that everybody in the outside world was their evil heathens. So it was a real isolated experience and that I never fit into that mold whatsoever. That I was just too infinitely curious about anything and everything. It's just from yeah. 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 Type of people that have come up here are definitely there's a like I think a sense of adventure or whatever that would lead you to some crazy stuff. And then there's those interesting stories that are just that yeah don't happen elsewhere. Here it's more wide open and, and it really is psychologically my head feels like it just opens up which I like, it's exciting. I can go anywhere, do anything. I used to be quite a busy person and it slowed me down probably half a notch. Moving here was great, good, good for that kind of slow you right down kind of thing and take in, take in the, everything else that's going on in your life besides you know that moment that you're trying to get to the next moment to the next moment. I've realized you know that how many more moments there are, who knows, but every single one, just, you know, I'm counting on every single one. It's great because no matter how long you stay here, you're always going to see something new, a different shade of this or a different moment of that. I've, I keep seeing new things here all the time. Sometimes you take it for granted and don't think about it, but I find if I leave here once a year and go anywhere else, it all comes back to me, you know, the reason I'm here. And the element of surprise here is always, you know, you never know what's going to happen, you know, you know, being a musician in the north, you know, you, you see all kinds of stuff and some of it you see over and over again and um, that can drive you to the brink and other times you can see just that one thing that stands out as being special or that one special moment. In city, watching the river flow. Sun is shining, warm wind is blowing. There ain't nowhere I'd rather be. Life is grand once again, Lord. Or has it always been? Just don't know, but it goes to show. But all the times they shoot can change Well, I'm living the life Well, I'm living the life Living the life Like I always dream Living the life Well, I'm living the life Living the life Like I always dream Well, the kids and the family From all over the world Come and see this place. Catch a trace of the day that come and then be gone again. Oh, me, I work, stay for a while, and then I leave again. Come back when I want you, door is always open. Sure do like it this way. Well, I'm living the life, well, I'm living the life, living the life like I always dream. Living the life, well, I'm living the life, living the life like I always dream. First time I ever saw the mountains, I found a security there. I just found a comfort. The mountains gave me that comfort to just, oh, I can do what I want to do. 
I just stood there and looked at him and went, wow, I'm not that big anymore. It made me feel great. I just thought, wow. You know, because I'd been to Toronto. They got skyscrapers, but nothing compared to a mountain that's been there like a million years. That skyscraper won't be there in a million years. They'll pull it down and build something new. But that mountain's not going anywhere. Talk about how permanent. Sort of get in touch, you know, with yourself. Find out, you know, is it all that important to chase this or that? Coming from a busy city where I was constantly trying to make a buck or get ahead or whatever, to kind of just doing stuff that, you know, doesn't make money. It's, it's whatever you make of it. And here, it, here you, you have time to do that, and that's acceptable. What I'm doing here is making a, a one sheet with uh, information and a photo on it for um, to use as, to send out to, to festivals to perform at. You know, everyone's got to find something to do here, and, and usually it's some sort of creative outlet. As soon as I came here, I was living in Whitehorse, and I had a roommate that said, uh, "There's an open stage." downtown I want to take to, I think you should go down and play it. And I kind of said, right, and I think I played the same three songs I knew probably twice in a row, all at the same speed. This lady uh, just hooted and hollered enough for a hundred people and I was like, wow, you know, this, wow, this, that, that was kind of fun, you know. And, and then I started getting around, going to people's house parties and meeting friends that were playing music and going to watch all the live music here and kind of going, whoa, I wish I'd like to learn that instrument or how do they sing like that or how do they do this and just playing nonstop. Every party you went to, everybody's house, at some point, instruments would come out. That's how the night would end every time. You know, having a muse like music is a great, you know, it's a great thing. It's an acceptable thing here, whereas, you know, other places people will shun you for putting so much into one thing or, or various sort of, you know, things you're interested in. But. If you were here this fellow who I used to play with at the pit, he's a character. Bad drunk, but killer guitar player. Learnt lots. Never directly, but would say, hey, how you doing, Gil? And it'd be like, yep. Every day above the ground's a good day. So, every day above the ground is a good day. At this point, he officially I'm done with chemotherapy, I've gone through that, which was nasty, and uh, they've written me off. It's just a matter of, he has, I haven't asked him for a, a timeline, but uh, I'm sure it doesn't, it doesn't look good. My mortality is definitely in question here, and realistically, if you're a betting man, my odds are not as good as yours. Same time, you know. You know, a dog could go in front of your vehicle or a moose and boom, you know, there you go. Physically and emotionally, it's been really, really difficult. Like this last week here, holding food down has been a real challenge. There's that side of things, you know, just that hardcore reality and the misery and and then I've got a I, here I am in a beautiful beautiful home my love and my life Tanya you know who's just exquisite in every manner and and then this community as well where uh, people have done so much for me and that this time it's just been overwhelming and so it's like the beauty it just seems to balance out all the other stuff as ugly and deranged and everything as it gets. It's beautiful as well. And I guess that's Yukon too, like in the north in general, like the tough stories, the hardships, the extremes, you know. It's that edge, you know, summertime, it's nothing but daylight and sunshine, winter, t you know, it's getting dark now, right? Uh, you know, it's what, three o'clock, it's getting dark. And it's beautiful. I'm standing by a door, fumbling for a key. The 
led me into this house with all its memories. The house that stands empty now, ghost upon the land. Inside of me there is a child screaming at the man. And as I fumble for Wonder, do I have the right to shatter this silent night with all my fear? And memories of a youth, though many years ago, screaming laughter through the yard. Forts built in the snow Sailing boats in the creek Swimming in the pond Lazy days of summertime Breeze blows, they're gone As I stand here in a mist Hands clenched tightly in a fist Life shows me a simple twist Blinds up my eyes Back in old easy smile, wipes away all the highway miles. Seems to make it all worthwhile. So I turn and I walk away. And in the fading of the night, I think I found the key. give me a ticket out of here any time now for a month I wouldn't mind you know that would be okay go somewhere warm that'd be just fine but at the same time there's something about the darkness and experiencing the darkness and the and you can appreciate the light you know that the pain allows you to understand bliss you know your heart's ripped open yet it's it's the sadness and it's joy I don't come here to have to impress somebody, you just come here to, to live. You know, what you're doing, it's not based around how you look or how you dress or, you know, how you present yourself. You don't have to have this facade of, of trying to be something else or whatever. You just can be yourself and that's okay and it's acceptable. This is the place to do things, for, you know, to sort of take it upon yourself to do stuff. So if you want to, you know, make your life interesting, you can move here and do that. I notice that when I leave here and go anywhere else and it's just external, so much stuff going on, you're just overwhelmed, you know. People, they go outside, they are back here cursing it. You know, the speed of it, the smell of it, the, the sound of it. I know I'll leave here, but I'll know I'll come back. You know, I'll leave here for maybe a year and go and do whatever and then, but I'll be back. All right, good evening, welcome to our set. We're the Gordy Tentris Band, we're from the Yukon. We're gonna bring a little Yukon here for a little stint. I drive an old car. I drive an older truck. <laughs> I chop wood. Some friends who have come up, musician friends, they go, man, how can he live like that? Outdoor plumbing, chopping wood, hauling water. And then they would just say, oh, you're weird. That's fine. Weird's good. I grew up in Ontario. Then I lived in Alberta. I lived in BC. I lived in Quebec. It never felt like home. I never felt like I belonged there. 
And then when I came here in 79, it just felt good. It felt like home. It was a nice thing where you could just do and be whatever you wanted. It's allowed me to be who and what I am without ever questioning or trying to change me. And the bonus is you wander to a place that's got a nice view, there's a couple of nice people, and you've had a lot of fun. Check one, two, check. Check, 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 check. One, two, check. Sibling, sibling. It really feels like I, for the first time, really, really found a community home that really accepts me and uh, has, uh, not only accepts me but has embraced me and loves me and, and it seems like I'm needed. There's moments where it's like, oh my god, what am I doing up here? Then there's points too where I seem to and go, where, where will this take me? And throw yourself over the edge of a bit of a cliff and see if you can make your way back up or hopefully your wings sprout wings and you fly to some different mountain top.